Flathead Lake in Montana has been familiar environment to Eugene Peterson for all his 80 years. A former pastor and professor, now full-time writer, he lives in a home that once was his parents' cottage on this idyllic lake. Glacier National Park is just around the other shore. So Eugene, you grew up right in this area. Was the environment and care of the environment important to your family? Um, no. We were in a sectarian church. I really didn't pay much attention. Everything that was important happened in church. And then um, I gradually started exploring the country myself. And then uh, a kind of a breakthrough came, I think, when I went to university. And uh, it was in Seattle, and I began being curious about things. And somehow I found astronomy was fascinating. And uh, I came home one summer, and my mother, who was very influential in my life, um, we were down on the dock. It was night. It was uh, a night, and she said, "Oh, Eugene, I'm gonna hardly wait to get to heaven." Uh, learn the name of all the stars. I said, well, Mother, let's just learn a few right now. That's Orion up there, that, and that's Arcturus. Uh, there's Deneb. Uh, oh, Eugene, I can't be bothered now. I'll wait till I get to heaven. <laughs> so that's the kind of world I grew up in. Um, but I think when I really started paying attention to the environment when, was when we started having children, and we'd bring them out here for the summer, and uh, we'd go backpacking. Watching his children enjoy nature shifted his approach to earth care. But I think they taught me the difference between caring for the environment and caring for the creation. And that made, made a really deep mark on me. And I became, I think, very much alert to what the creation was and how much a part of my life it was and how I was part of it, yeah. So it's just a radical connection yeah. with the world. With the world, yeah. Makes you conscious of care of the world. And of each other. You know, our family was much more now attentive to each, each other. We, we had time and, and a certain sense of rule, play and pray, not duties. Just enjoy, pay attention to God, pay attention to each other, have fun. Now I feel a lot of people are doing this. Or maybe a lot more people are doing this. I'm not satisfied. I've, there's a lot of work still to do. But it's not all that difficult once people get the idea of what kind of world we live in and what kind of God we have. And the preciousness of every moment that's given to us. And we can't do that if we're on the run all the time. We've got to de make decisions that give us space, time, and attitude. I used the word reverence earlier. I think you know, developing a sense of reverence is, um, is the key to a lot of this. And that's what Sabbath keeping is basically about, holiness to it. People get angry. So the, the world, the, the environmental world, uh, becomes more important than the people who are living on it. What would it look like to recover from that? I think it would, re I, I don't know which comes first, the chicken or the egg here, but I think we would recover a sense of reverence. We are not a very reverent people. Um, and we don't look at either people or things with reverence. Uh, we use thing, things and we use people just about with the same intensity. And so I think what we're, what we're looking for, this is why Sabbath keeping is so important, I think. It means entering, accepting the environment as it is, and being part of it. Sabbath is not a religious word. It's just, it's, it says stop, quit, shut up, and see what's going on. This world is incredible. Pray and play is another way to look at Eugene Peterson's approach to the environment. But flourishing really has to do with love, has to do with a shared life, has, has to do with the sacrificial life where we become communities and not just individuals trying to get our own way. 
So we've got, I guess sin is the shorthand word for what we're talking about because everything that's beautiful can be made ugly and everything that is good can be used for bad means, as a bad means. So is our problem in how we approach the environment then one of human values? Oh, it is. And where do you nurture human values most directly? Well, for the Christian, it's by looking at Jesus Christ and looking at the revelation that takes place, looking at this creation, letting the scriptures teach us how to treat one another and the land. But the garden gets misunderstood because we think we were meant to have dominion. There, that is a phrase. That is, it is a phrase. Yeah, how, how do you interpret have dominion? It's ours to use, it's ours to consume. No, it isn't. Dominion doesn't mean doing what you want. It means caring for what's given to you in a, in a healthy way. Dominion is not uh, a negative word in, uh, in most languages. It's when dominion becomes slavery or dictatorship that it's, we're imposing our will on it. But if we're caring for what's there so that it's healthy, grows, beautiful, that's what dominion is.